Rolling Stones, they've sold more than 200 million albums worldwide. Estimated that between 1989 and 2002, the Stones pulled in about $1.5 billion. Now Mick says it was never about the money, yet it created problems for him that forced him to flee to France. But first, we spoke about Mick's quest for perfection. Are you a perfectionist? Uh, I, I maybe I am in some things, but I, I, I mean, I also know that there's only so far you can go, you know, in the, in this kind of endeavor. You know, you, you, you've got to come. It's good that you have. I like a deadline because then after the deadline, you, you know, you're done, and that's got to be there. You've got to be there, and you know, and because you can mess with this stuff and. Some people in, you know, all kinds of artistic endeavours, you know, writing books or making movies or records, that, that people love the process of it. They love the process of being in the studio or editing the movie. And so someone at some point says, like, mm, I think you've done now, I think you've, I think you've finished. What you've got or you've got is good enough, you know. Let's talk about the exile. You, when you had a tax lien, you know, people forget this story. Oh, well, it's a, yeah, it's not particularly interesting to, except for us, to when us. When a major group leaves but, but, the group. Yeah, where we had to go, it, it, when, which is sort of, we, we had some problems uh, that we, we, we had some very bad uh, advice, and we were, you know, pretty green in some ways, and we were just interested in making music, and we weren't really interested in, 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 in the money side of things too much. Very typical story. Money and, wasn't the goal. Money wasn't the goal. No, we, we expected to be well off, you know, because in those days you just did if you were successful. And we were very successful, but we weren't very well managed. So we had to leave England to, to, to acquire enough money to pay the taxes, because in those days, in England, the, tax, the high tax rate was 90%. So you made a hundred. You made a hundred pounds. So made, they took ninety. Exactly. You made a hundred pounds. They took ninety. So it was very difficult to pay any debts back. So when we left the country, we would get more than the ten pounds out of the hundred. You know, we might get fifty or something. What was it like to live in France? The well, documentary shows it. Really yeah, right in the document, it was. It was. You know, France is a. You know, I knew France quite well, and you know, most English people have been to France when they were kids. You know, it's like the next door country, and most English people have got experience of France. And then the south of France is pretty. Um, hmm, not bad. Not bad. You know, most people are, love it. You know, and. Somerset Maugham, though, said, you know, so, what did he say? It was a sunny place for shady people. <laughs> so, 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 you know, it, it has an underbelly, you know, as well, uh, uh, as well as the sort of glamorous exterior. Um, but it was a, yeah, it's a good place. Wasn't it's a it beautiful hard, though, climate. To, wasn't it hard to leave home? It's hard, yeah. I think at the beginning, when you're young, it's not. You know, it's not really, I didn't find it much of a wrench, but then after a while, you know, you realize that, you know, I, I mean, I didn't miss the British food and all that sense, but some <laughs> English people miss all these things. But, but uh, after a while, you realize that you, it makes you a bit rootless, I think. And, and, uh, rootless. Ro rootless. Yeah, you know, rootless, yeah. Rootless, yeah. But, you know, having said that, you know, if you're a touring musician, you, you tend, that's what you tend to be. It's the road. That, the road is your life. And so it's not, in a, in a way, you know, you can overplay that. Was, were you held in low regard in your mother country for leaving it? Oh, probably. Everyone is. I mean, everybody that, I mean, you're held in low regard in most countries if you even step out of it, if ever. You know, what, what people want you to be is a little band that plays in clubs and that's where you should belong you know they don't want you a big six to be a big success you're never the same you know so especially in England in those days and even now I think that you if once you become a success a worldwide success you no longer belong to the little place where you started to the little part of West London where you uh, brought up so or played and so so you you lose something of that when you become a, a, a success. This, I don't think America's really like that. I, don't, I think you find that kind of hard to understand. Yeah. You know, you, success is resented? Yeah. It's resented. Uh, it was then, anyway. I'm not sure about now whether it really is on, on the same level. It was, England was a, is a much more open place. It's no secret that Mick Jagger has used drugs and he's been busted. His candid remarks about the role drugs have played in his life and music, they're next.